Merry Christmas and welcome to worship. Let's begin our worship with a word of prayer. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for the promise of Christmas. We thank you for that promise that your light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. We pray that you be with us during this worship time, that you fill us up with your Holy Spirit, fill us up with your light so that we can shine your light with everyone we encounter today. We pray this trusting in your mercy and through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the inn. In that region, living in the fields, were shepherds keeping watch over their flock by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and had the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't, Don't be afraid. To you is born this day in the city of David, the Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Boating men share certain things in common. Call it genetics, call it dumb luck, but there's just certain things that we all do. For instance, when it comes to marriage, we pretty much always outkick our coverage. It's just the way it is. When it comes to conversation, when a subject arises that we know nothing about, whereas other people would withdraw, maybe listen. No, we jump right in, especially if it's a controversial topic we know nothing about. Then we tend to be highly opinionated and pretend to be experts. It's just, it's just what we do. And most importantly, when it comes to emotions, boating men, we, we push those things down. We push them down really deep. We never show weakness because weakness, frankly, it makes everyone uncomfortable. I suppose I learned this lesson from my grandfather boating. He was this tough, hardworking man. In fact, stories of him that the family tells, they're, they're kind of legendary. That in spite of whatever challenge my grandfather faced, he never showed weakness. Like many of his generation, he grew up at a time in American history where, where things were genuinely difficult. And in spite of whatever winds or waves crashed upon him, my grandfather was like a solid rock. He could not be moved. He never showed weakness, except in his early 60s, 
We don't, as a family, talk about these stories because, frankly, we don't know what to do with them. They're so inconsistent with who we thought our grandfather was. But in his early 60s, my grandfather started showing emotions. He started getting sad. He actually started crying on occasion, and it made all of us so uncomfortable. We don't even talk about it anymore because that's not what a Bodine man is, is supposed to do. Same is true of my father. My father, when I was a kid, he never showed sadness, save one time. It was an important date. I remember it. I was in fourth grade. The phone rang. We knew what the phone call was going to be. We had gone to say goodbye to my grandfather the day before, my father's father. His health was failing. We knew he wasn't long for the world. My family knew that was the last time we were going to see him. When the phone rang, we knew it would be the doctor or my grandmother calling to say that he had passed away. My dad got that news. He hung up the phone and he took a deep breath. And when he turned, I saw the most amazing thing I'd ever seen before. I saw my father cry. But here was what is telling. My father cried one tear. Literally, he had one tear fall down his cheek. And after that tear ran down his cheek, he wiped his cheek off. He took a deep breath. He reached for the phone book and he started calling his siblings. And as a very young man, I realized that's the way it's supposed to be done. We're not going to sit around and cry all day. When we feel emotions, fine. You get one tear. But then you wipe away that tear and you get on with doing the things that need to be done. That's what I was taught. Bodhi meant and just push it down. Don't show weakness because weakness makes everyone uncomfortable. But friends, a funny thing is starting to happen to me. Now that I'm in my late 40s, all of a sudden there's some cracks in this armor. And frankly, it's not fun. All of a sudden I'm having emotions when I do not anticipate them arising. I have been a person who has walked with people as a family member, as a friend, as a pastor through some very difficult times. And for the most part, I feel like I've been able to hold my stuff together. But now, they're popping up all over the place. Last year, I go to my son's last basketball game, watching him and his teammates, little boys and boys, young men that I've watched since they were little boys, run up and down the court. And all of a sudden, I can feel that tightness in my chest. This year, when my daughter left for school for the first time, for the first day of school, when she drove away too quickly, and I mean that in the terms of both maybe driving a little too quickly, but also life just going by way too quickly, all of a sudden I felt that lump in my throat. Now you may say, Pastor Justin, it's okay. Don't worry about it. When it comes to your children, children are the exception, maybe. But friends, this stuff is popping up all the time. Even this year when we are decorating the Christmas tree, just a few weeks ago, the kids are hanging the ornaments. Jane is setting up the nativity scene. I'm going through the crates, taking out whatever we've missed. And suddenly, the emotions grab a hold of me. They grabbed a hold of me when I found these snowmen. These snowmen that have been with us for the last 25 years. These snowmen that are with us in our very first apartment up in the Twin Cities. They're with us in Dodge Center, and they're now here with us in Red Wing. And I didn't start to get emotional just because last year, Mr. Snowman lost an arm. It fell off, and before I could pick it up, the two dogs grabbed a hold of it and pulled it apart. So now Mr. Snowman always has to be on the right of his wife. That's, that's not why I got emotional. No, the reason why I got emotional is I started thinking about where these snowmen came from. You see, these were gifts from my grandmother, my grandmother Bodine. She was one of those people who, she loved to craft. She was a big quilter. She sewed all sorts of things. She made these really wonderful and beautiful things. And yet, for some reason, as a dumb kid, I always thought the snowmen were like the height of anything that could be created. I just thought they were the coolest things in the world. And so, so before she passed away, my grandmother made sure that I had a set. As I held those in my hands that day, suddenly the emotions hit me. I started thinking about my grandmother, a woman who in the end of her life, she was overrun with arthritis and it made basically everything that she loved to do very, very challenging. The, the pain was, was pretty obvious and yet my grandmother continued to find ways to be a servant to people in her community, including working at the church that she loved so dearly. I began to think about my grandmother who, who, when death was approaching, instead of thinking about herself 
as I would have probably done. My grandmother was thinking about others, including about me, including about Jane, just to give us a very simple but loving gift. And as I held those things in my arms, I couldn't help or held them in my hands to think that my grandmother had held these. And that somehow by touching them, I was actually touching my grandmother's hands. And in that moment, I couldn't help myself. I felt so overwhelmed with love that, friends, the chest tightened, the, the lump in my throat returned, and yes, the tears started to well up in my eyes. It was an uncomfortable moment. If you want to make decorating the Christmas tree an uncomfortable moment, go ahead and break out in tears. The, the kids pretended like they didn't notice, thankfully. I tried to walk into the other room, but my wife, she most certainly noticed. She came around the corner without fully understanding what was going on. She just gave me a hug and said, it's okay, you don't have to fight it. Now friends, I tell you this story not to tell you about how on the most uh, heavily attended worship service of the year, both in person and in online, how, how your pastor might be having a midlife crisis. No, that's not what this is about. If you understand this experience, then maybe, just maybe, you understand what Christmas is truly all about. And this is what I mean. In the midst of our traditions, in the midst of the songs, in the midst of the food and the presents and all the other wonderful things that we do, in the midst of this story, the story that includes a manger and shepherd and magi and, and all sorts of animals and Mary and Joseph, we meet the one. We meet the Christ child. People of God, this is the hand of God coming into this world. In Christ, God touches us. Through Jesus, we get to touch God. This Jesus, of course, who grows up into this extraordinary man who leads a life of service unparalleled in human history. Everyone he meets, he's, he's healing, he's liberating, he's transforming, he is loving. That's what Jesus does. And Jesus, when he approaches his own death, what we think will be the final chapters of his story, Jesus isn't thinking about himself. No, as he carries the cross up Golgotha, Jesus is thinking about those that he is giving his life for. Friends, he's thinking about you and me. And if you get that, if you get that just a little bit, if you get, whether it's for the first time or the millionth time, that the Savior of the world, that we have a God who loves us so much that the God who, who created literally everything knows you. If you get the fact that, that the one who parted the Red Sea loves you, if you get the fact, even just a little bit, that the one who calls forth light from the darkness reaches out his hands to touch you so that through him, through Jesus Christ, you can touch the creator of the universe. If you get that just a little bit, if you get how much you are loved, well, then you can't help it. The well, that lump in your throat's going to well up, your chest is going to tighten, and yes, maybe, just maybe, this year you're going to find a few tears in your eyes. And if that happens to you, friends, don't fight it. You really are this love. Embrace it. Know that you are loved by the creator of the universe. And for that, we say thanks be to God. Amen.
holy night, let us take some time and pray for our world, our church, our community, and all those in need. Let us pray together. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for the Christ child. We thank you for the promise that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and gracious God, we pray for family of all kinds as they gather this holiday season. Be with them in their celebrations. Fill them with joy and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy and gracious God, the world is beautiful and good and filled with your light, but we also acknowledge that it is broken and filled with sin. We pray for people all around the world who struggle, who cry out for justice, who cry out for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then finally, holy and gracious God, we pray for those we know and love who are hurting today. Pray for those for whom this is not a day of celebration, but it's a day of grief, a day of pain, a day of struggle. We lift them up before you in our hearts right now. Pour it upon them, Holy God, your Holy Spirit. Grant them your comfort, your healing, and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and gracious God, we lift our prayers to you, trusting in your mercy and through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and the one who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace.
inside.